um, after purchasing an Own It Now property through the Detroit Land Bank um, Authority website or whatever, right? So first, I'm going to go over about how long the process took. I think I put my bid in maybe around the 31st or the 1st of January, of February, sorry. The 31st of January or the 1st of February. And I won my bid on Thursday, February 4th. So I'm sure you've seen from other YouTube channels that once you place your bid on the website, um, there's approximately 72 hours that other individuals have to bid on that property. So like, you'll notice you may purchase a property or put the bid in of $1,000, so that's where they start at. You might put the bid in, maybe your property started on page four, and you'll notice as the, the timer ticks and gets closer to that 72 hours ending, that it'll go from like page four to page three to page two to page one, right? So that way it's more visible to more people and I assume it's still the land bank could has a higher chance of getting more money. So in my situation, there were a few other people who put a bid in um, after, it was like the first maybe 40 hours, no one else had bid on the property. And I wanna say by the time it had reached page one, page two, um, all of a sudden there were three bids, you know, in addition to mine. And so I went in because I kept, I kept checking. I, I didn't just put my bid in and leave it. So I started obviously like at a thousand and then I think I took it to like 1500 and then took it a third time, went in and changed it again to 2200, right? For the bid. Um, and so again, 72 hours after I put the initial bid in, not after changing it, because once that timer starts, it keeps going, you know? Um, but seven hours after the initial bid, I won, which was um, February 4th on a Thursday. And almost a week later on February 12th, they sent me my purchase agreement, which I had signed the same day, that Friday. And then by the time the weekend was over, it was accepted on Tuesday. And that was only because President's Day was that Monday, you know? So um, again, things went pretty quickly from there. Now, I didn't close on the property until April, what was it? No, 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 let me back up. I closed on the property March 26th. So, it was over a month from the time I won the bid to the time that I actually closed on the property. Um, now, they only take the $1,000 deposit initially. They only take that. And then um, everything else is due at closing. And obviously, you have to bring a money order or a cashier's check for that. Um, in my situation, I was fortunate enough that there weren't any liens on the property. There weren't like uh, any past due taxes. There's nothing like that. Now you can go and check that. I know other people are like, oh, you can use a title company. I personally didn't do that. I utilized like several websites, just Googling, you know, doing my Googles, right? Um, I also, like you can see, that the property taxes, for instance, that my property that I bought, I was able to see all the way back until like 2016, 2015, where the property taxes have been paid each year. Now the water bill, that's kind of tricky. I couldn't find if, what, if money was owed on that, but it turns out there really wasn't, right? So yay for me. Um, as far as where to buy the properties, I worked out of Detroit in 2015 2016 but even then i lived in romulus and i'm from la i've lived in athens lived in phoenix moved back to la moved back to phoenix like so i'm not really familiar with detroit so someone like me i didn't even see the property i didn't tour the area i was just like for 2200 who gives a crap like even if i put 30,000 into it it's a whole hell of a lot less than what i'm gonna spend if i get financed through a bank and with me being debt free i just I don't want a mortgage, you know? So anyways, um, 
you can utilize the census and the websites that they have to get an idea of what the people in your area make on average, what their education is like. I know there may be some controversy in this, but typically, right, if you live in an area where people have more education and make more money, there's probably most of the time less crime. So, I mean, you can just do with that what you will, what you will with that information. Um, and then what else? I went to like Niche, I think it was like, it's like N-I-C-H-E dot com or whatever, however you say that. And you can see like the rating of the neighborhood. The neighborhood I bought in was like a C rating. It's like a, it's like just C, not a C plus, not a C minus, just a C, right? And uh, I'm like, okay, it's not too bad. You know, compared to the rest of Detroit, there's not as many break-ins. It's not like in crazy, nothing crazy going on, right? The school had a really high rating, which I was surprised because I've heard terrible things about the schools in Detroit. So I was like, okay, that's, that's kind of cool, you know? So, um, yeah, based off of all that, because I put the bid in anyway, you can always withdraw your bid. But once I saw the home that I liked, that I felt like didn't need any crazy repairs based off of the images they had on the website, you know, I uh, did research on the area, looked it up on Zillow and all that other stuff, all that good stuff, looked up the aerial images from, <laughs> I think it went back to like, because the home was uh sold in 2004 2005 and then 2006 and then there were aerial images going back pretty far i think all the way back to like 2011 or 2012 you know so i looked at all those looked around the area again just just do your research while that clock is ticking you've got 72 hours you know and um yeah so i decided okay this might be a good area now i've told you Again, just to backtrack, I told you from the time I placed my bid, won the bid, signed the purchasing agreement, and closed on the property, it was over a month. It was closer to two months, actually. You know, I've already told you that initially only the $1,000 deposit comes out. And then at closing, all the other fees, like those closing fees, title fees, whatever, you know, is due on the day of closing. So you have... I think a sufficient amount of time, be it with work or figuring out if you're going to finance to get that money up. That's a lot of time to figure out what you're going to do, you know, if you haven't already before placing your bid. Um, and I told you already how I decided that, okay, this is the property that I would like to purchase without actually seeing it in person, right? Now, when I got there, because I went I flew to Detroit because again, I'm still living in, well, really we live in Chandler, you know? I'm still living out in the Phoenix area though, you know? And I'm like driving around the area. I see like one side, I don't know if it was Hamtramck or not, cause I'm right on that border, you know? And I'm like, this is like really nice. Oh my God, that's the school they were talking about. They got all kinds of drug-free zone, little signs and the roads look new. Like they've recently did them. There's new stop signs. There's a bunch of, new or newly renovated homes it was just such a cute neighborhood all the yards look so clean i actually have a video but um i go back out there tomorrow so i was going to combine the videos but anyways um <clears throat> such a cute neighborhood and then i keep driving and then there's like more abandoned homes and i'm like hmm, okay see more abandoned homes and then uh i get to my neighborhood now one half of the block is occupied there's people who live there it's very working class you know like you see their work trucks out front. I got there in the morning because our flight landed at like 5.30ish, you know? And so I'm riding before the sun comes up to see what the neighborhood's like before the sun rises, you know? And I'm looking around. I'm seeing people heading out to work. I'm like, okay, okay. So I'll look at the cars in the neighborhood. Are they busted out with like missing rims and shit? Like, I mean, sorry, stuff like that. Like, I'm just looking around, you know? Um, and... I, you know, the people over there seem okay. You know, they seem okay. They seem like good people. And um, I'm driving to my half of the block and I see abandoned homes, but it's dark out. So I ride back around again after I closed on the property and <clears throat> get a better idea of what the neighborhood is like when the sun is up. Um, so on the other street, just about all the homes are occupied. But on my block, half of them aren't and half of them are. 
with the exception of my house, obviously, and then one across the street, the other two across from me and two to my left, I notice are being renovated. Um, there's new doors. One of them had new windows. You can tell where they just recently had done the yard and had everything backed up. So I was like, this is, this is good, you know, I think, right? Most of the street is occupied and the homes that aren't, people are, um, people are working on them. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm looking at my house. Now, when I placed this bid, I was like, okay, we're going to be cash flowing everything. So I didn't want anything too big. I'm like, okay, I'm purchasing a 1,158 square foot home, three bedroom, one and a half bath. I'm fine with that. You know, I think, I think we can do that. And so I get there and I FaceTime Chen and I'm like, this is not, <laughs> this house is bigger than what they say. FaceTime my cousin. I'm like, I call my dad. I'm like, please pick up, please pick up. Like, this is not the house that, the house looked the same, but it was significantly bigger than what the pictures on Zillow made it appear like and what the pictures in, um, on the Detroit, like the land bank, you know, website, whatever it made it look like. So I have the guys the day after I close, I meet up with the landscaper. I'll get to that next. And then <laughs> have some guys come and clean out whatever furniture was in there and the old toilets and the vanities, right? Cause I'm just, I'm that kind of person, like, you know? And so um, I go inside, there is a separate living room a separate dining room with a beautiful archway. I mean, you just, I love old homes, so, but you just don't see architecture, like homes designed this way anymore, you don't. Beautiful archway leading into the kitchen. And then there's, behind that, there's a room, one room, a bathroom, a room, then obviously the hallway, living, dining, and then kitchen, all separate, which I like, you know, I don't like to see, I don't want my guests to see me preparing the food. Right now we have like a very open concept with like a huge island and, you know, so it's, I just, you know, I like to have my guests in one place and then I can prepare and plate everything somewhere else, you know, I don't want them to see that process. And so, um, so yeah, uh, I'm looking like, well, there, there's clearly an upstairs. Where's the third bedroom at, right? It's gonna, gonna be one huge freaking bedroom because clearly this house is already larger than the square footage they listed. So apparently you go to the kitchen, there's a door on the left, right? You have to go up some stairs. I get upstairs, there's three bedrooms upstairs, a full bath, and then what I'm assuming might be like a loft type area. So it's a five bedroom and then there's a half bathroom in the basement. So I thought I got a three bedroom, one and a half bath. No, no, no. I now have a five bedroom, two and a half bath with the loft and the basement is fully finished. So um, just something to be aware of. I mean, this might seem like common sense to y'all, but it wasn't so common to me because, you know, that house was not what they described on the Detroit Land Bank Authority, whatever website. Um, but ultimately, you know, I, I feel really good about it. The schools in the area were decent. I was just going to use it for work. My family's going to stay here um, and then I'll be the one to commute to Detroit. But when they're in town, you know, obviously... The kids and Chen, they'll have somewhere to stay, but I was just gonna use it while I'm working since I'll be commuting to work, but I'm not sure what I'll do with the other rooms <laughs> when my family's not there, but yeah. So yeah, just, just be aware of that, you know, what you see on there may not be what you get. Another example of that is uh, the landscaping. So people have been dumping on the property there was a lot of crack grass. There was a lot of like trees and brushes and stuff growing around the house. And the trees in the front that are on the sidewalk um, had overgrown over the roof 
and one like you see there's two holes in the roof from the trees they had grown out so much they knocked out the windows up front um it, it was just massive so i you know there's three trees that have to be trimmed in the front yard like have to because you guys will see the video i'm gonna record it it's just so bad you know the landscaping is just terrible and i remember telling my dad and telling chen like how is like how is the landscaping costing more than what the windows are gonna cost you know but ultimately it's around 2200 exactly 2140 dollars that um, we're spending on the yard alone and you know within 15 days of closing they want a picture of all four sides of the property um of all four sides of the property um with it boarded up and showing that the yard is free of like debris and things of that nature you know with people dumping all this wood and branches and other waste on the property we have to clean that up in addition to taking care of the trees you know so that way it doesn't take off half the roof you know or the porch and um surprisingly the porch is in really good condition i mean there was no foundation issues i was so surprised whoever built that house built it very well or the people who built it did such an amazing job so where the brick for for it to be abandoned or maybe the previous a homeowner took good care of it like even the front door the front door is super the front door is the same door the house was built in 1924 1923 it's the same door that they've had the whole just very old beautiful antique door so we're trying to find a way to keep it or salvage it because it's just such a beautiful door um but anyways never besides that um but uh yeah they want pictures of all four sides of the property from the yard to the window free of everything you know no trash nothing like that whatever right which um my rep the lady who's working with me um on the compliance because they do have deadlines but i told her i'm like look this is a really extensive um the the yard work needed on this property is quite extensive and it's going to be expensive you know and she's like well you know that's fine i'll count it because it's so much money she'll count it towards my 30 day and then after that she wants me just to worry about the water and getting the water turned on and the inspection and i was like okay cool so if you communicate with them they just want to see some progress you know just communicate with them if you have something come up you know for me i think we budgeted out 600 to a thousand dollars on yard work and obviously we're spending more than that so um next we wanted to do windows which we still may do um but again just in case it's always a good idea to communicate with them and let them know hey we've this is going on that's going on and they're going to work with you you just need to communicate um i think it's also a good idea to be organized and write down everything i mean i've got this i've got this like my little book i can tell you um including travel expenses even though i worked for an airline we had to buy tickets to come back because non-revving was just i don't know people were just everyone's traveling which is good y'all keep flying you know i wish i could say the airline i worked for but keep flying y'all you know so anyways the rental car was like 336 um the hotel was 264 plus the closing cost of 2030 dollars because i had that initial deposit a thousand dollars then there was the 2200 and then the remainder of that 2030 that was due on the closing day was just fees and taxes and stuff for the title you know what i mean food i think we spent 164 dollars and 20 cents and uh for cleanup i got away with only spending 306 dollars which is good that's less than what i thought it would be now carpet removal is going to be more than that so we'll probably do that ourselves um and then plain plane tickets uh coming back to phoenix were about 738 with with the employee discount um so overall we spent one thousand eight hundred and nine dollars and twenty cents just on travel expenses so if you're going to be commuting back and forth and traveling from out of state just be mindful of that work that into your budget um plan out food you know we packed a lot of food as well but have a budget set aside for food 
and include what you spend. I mean, most of us know how to budget, right? I mean, if not, I guess I could do a video on that. Um, but uh, yeah, make sure you write down everything because I mean, when it comes to what you profit, I don't wanna say like, oh, I only spent $10,000, you know, on this property and profited, you know, this much money, right? But it's like, well, it's not really profit. Like, how do I explain it? If I'm not factoring in what I spent on travel expenses um, and money I may have pulled from my contingency fund, then that's not really an accurate picture of my profit or profits, you know, that profit margin. So I think that's just something to be mindful of. Make sure you write everything down. Um, if you're really, you know, more into technology, I think Excel spreadsheets are a wonderful way to go. And, you know, they're kind of fun to do, I think. But writing things down is also helpful. Um, it's something for me about writing it, feeling it, seeing it to kind of help me digest and really understand just what I put into it. You know, um, write down the dates that you do things. Um, just, just keep track of everything. Um, if you have an office that helps, but I mean, even for me, like no one really goes in my beauty area, like where my vanity and stuff is at. So I keep my things over there as far as, um, finances might go. And, um, you know, but Chen, he's got an office, so he keeps his there, whatever works for you. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I covered everything. Make sure you budget, make sure you write everything down. It was about two months from the time I put my bid in to the time I actually closed. A little close to that. Um, they'll work with you. Just make sure you communicate. They just need to see some progress. And uh, be mindful of the timeline. Now, to be fair, they will let you know this when you close. It says six months, but it does not have to be done in six months. Things happen, these homes are old. They're very old. Um, just let them know and be making some progress. Um, but overall, I think, you know, in my opinion, I think it's a beautiful thing. I love, you know, from when I was based in Detroit uh, from 2015 to 2016 compared to now, I've seen the growth as somebody who has not been back to Detroit since probably 2018 on a layover and hasn't lived there since 2016. I've seen the growth, like going back, I can see the growth in the surrounding areas in downtown. Um, and I think it's great that there are people who are coming in and cleaning up the community and, you know, it's creating opportunity and with all these out of towners coming in, such as myself, I mean, think about how much more work these um, these uh, uh, contractors and landscapers and, and, and electricians and roofers and plumbers are getting that they otherwise may have not gotten. And it's just nice to see that um, people are supporting the local economy. And it's just it's doing such, I, I think, great things for the city. Um, I wish more cities could do stuff like this because, you know, if you're somebody who maybe, you know, you earn a decent living, but the way home prices are like, you know, unless you're in a two, you know, parent household, right? Or unless you're a really high income earner, I just don't see most people in most major cities being able to afford uh, homes. And this is an alternative to that. Even if you don't go through like the the Detroit Land Bank. I mean, there's other land banks in other cities. There's always auctions. Um, people are unfortunately always getting foreclosed on. So, I mean, that's like a thing, you know, even here, out here. So, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments what you think down below. Have you purchased a home through a land bank or done, you know, any owner financing or any other maybe not so oh, um, popular uh taking the popular pathway to owning a home? And if so, which pathway did you take, you know? What was your experience like? I mean, we can talk about it down below. And if there's anything else you guys would like to see, um, let me know that as well. Like I said, when I go tomorrow, I'll walk through the house and let you guys see 
what the house looks like on the inside. I'll let you see what I'm talking about with that yard and keep that in mind. There's just like, if you go through the Detroit Land Bank, especially, there's so many abandoned properties. Yeah, they're gonna board them up. They're supposed to keep up the yards, but the reality of it is there's tens of thousands of abandoned properties. So the likelihood of them maintaining that property, the yard, the way they should, it's probably not happening. So be prepared for that expense because that is something that you will have to do within the first 15 days. I don't think there's any way around that. You have to take care of that yard and anything that's in it in the first 15 days and you have to board it up. If nothing else, you have to do that. But yeah, we'll chat down in the comments below and uh, thank y'all for watching my video.